So today we'll go over how to handle missing data in R. When you are working with a lot of data and a lot of variables, it is uh, very common to have a situation where uh, some of the values may be missing. Now, one way we can handle missing data is uh, we just delete the row. But the problem there is, let's say we have 20 variables and uh, one data point is missing. So when you are deleting the entire row, not only you are deleting that one data point, but you are also throwing away 19 good data points. So that's uh, not a very smart idea. And especially if you have uh, many missing values, and if you start deleting uh, all the rows where any value is missing, then very quickly we land in a situation where we have thrown away a lot of uh, good data. So second problem that uh, may come up has something to do with the bias. So let's say we have data on uh, vehicle failures and only those uh, data points are missing where vehicle is quite old. So if we are throwing away all that data, so we are losing data on those kind of failures which are occurring in older vehicles. So that obviously creates some amount of bias. So another way to handle missing data could be that we find the average of non-missing values and replace that missing value with the average. If we have like lots of data with the maybe hundreds and thousands of rows, and if we are just changing one value using average, maybe it may not have a big impact, but in many other situations that may not be the best or optimal way or smart way to handle missing data. For example, let's say we have vehicle failure data on five failures and the data point that is missing is the mileage at which the car failed. Suppose we find average of uh, four mileage values where we have data and suppose that average comes to 50,000 miles and we replace this value with 50,000. What could happen is if this missing data was for one month in service where a vehicle has failed after one month, if we are putting a value of 50,000 miles, so that is very unlikely. In one month, it will be very rare to see somebody driving like 50,000 miles. So obviously that's not a very smart way. We are going to use a vehicle failure data file. So this is a data frame with the 1624 observations. So that many rows and there are seven variables. So there are seven columns. So the first column is just the vehicle number, one, two, three, four. And then we have failure month. What was the mileage at the time of car failure? And then labor hours, LH. So how much time it took to correct the problem? Labor cost is what was the cost? And then we have material cost. And what was the state of failure? So let's look at the summary. So for numeric variables, we get values like minimum, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, and maximum. And for categorical variable like state, we get frequencies like there were 290 failures reported in Texas, 199 in California, and so on. Apart from these summaries, we also get uh, values for NAs, so not available, which is basically missing data. So for mileage variable, there are 13 data points that are missing. For labor hours, 6, labor cost, 8. And for state, we have 15 missing values. So let's calculate what percentage of data is missing for each variable. So I'm going to save this in P for proportion or percentage. So we'll use function and then we can specify what this function is going to do. So we are going to sum by checking if it is not available data. So is dot n a x. So sum of missing values we divide by length and then we multiply this by 100 to get percentage and then we use apply so our data is data and since we have data in columns 
I am using two. One is for rows and then P. So we know that we don't have any missing data for vehicle or FM columns. But in mileage column, we have about 0.8% values missing. And for LH, we have 0.369. For LC, we have like about half a percent. And the maximum missing values are for state. So 0.923%. We can also make use of MD for missing data dot pattern within data. This gives us a table as well as a plot. So the first row here is 1586, which has a value of zero. So this means that there are 1586 rows with no missing data. And then there are 11 rows where there is exactly one data point missing. And that data point is missing in column state. We have 13 rows where mileage values are missing. Similarly, six data points missing from LC or labor cost column. And then there are two rows where we have exactly two data points missing, one from LC and one from state column. If you see column wise for vehicle, we have zero. So no missing data for FM, no missing data for MC, no missing data. And then six data points missing for labor hours eight for labor cost, 13 for mileage and 15 for state. Maximum number of data points are missing from state column. In all, we have 42 data points that are missing. So this information is actually depicted here in the form of a heat map. We can get another missing data pattern by using md.pairs. So we get uh, four different tables. First one is RR. Basically, these number indicates how many data points are observed. For example, for vehicle, all 1624 data points are observed, whereas for vehicle and state pair, 1609 data points are observed. Second table is uh, for RM, so observed and missing, followed by MR, which gives us a table about missing versus observed, and then missing versus missing two data points missing from state and LH combination or pair two data points missing from state and LC combination and so on. We can also do a marginal plot using margin plot. So we'll use data and within that we'll use all rows and for columns let's specify two columns. So I'm going to use mileage and let's use LC, labor cost. So blue dots are observed values and red dots are for missing values. So there are eight missing values for mileage. So this box plot is based on labor cost, but they do not have values for mileage. Similarly, there are 13 values that are missing for labor cost. And this box plot is based on the mileage of those data points where labor cost was missing. So let's store imputed data in impute. The function that we use is mice. And within the data, we'll only use columns two to seven because first column is vehicle and it's simply a vehicle number and it doesn't have any predictive power. So I'm going to ignore first column. And for that, we are going to use square brackets and then comma, which means all the rows, but only two to seven columns. We can also specify how many imputations we want. And I'm going to say number of imputations captured by M to be three. Default is five. I'm going to go for only three. And we can also use a random seed. Let's use one to three. You can see that it has done five iterations and for each iteration, uh, it has done three different imputations. So IMP is for imputation. So let's do print impute. So this gives us uh, more information. Number of multiple imputations, we chose three and imputation methods for the missing values are indicated here. So FM failure month 
doesn't have any missing value so no method has been used mileage is a numeric variable so the default method for dealing with the numeric missing values is predictive mean matching pmm so that's what has been used for mileage labor hours and labor cost material cost has no missing values so nothing has been used and state is a factor or categorical variable so the method used for imputation is a poly reg which is basically multinomial logistic regression so let's look at some imputed values let's choose mileage here so it lists all the rows where mileage value was missing and it gives the estimates for first second and third imputations let's look at some of these values to understand what it has done so let's uh, look at the 20th row so within data we look at 20th row and all columns or the 20th vehicle that failed so has missing mileage estimates based on three imputations range from 5777 to more than 15000 and the first imputation suggests a value of 7726 miles so let's also look at summary of data dollar sign mileage so average is about 20500 so if we replaced uh, all missing values by average so then this value would have been close to 20500 which is uh, not impossible if we consider 8 month in service so maybe there could be a customer who drives a lot and accumulates uh, 20500 within 8 months but let's look at 253rd uh, car failure note that this car has failed after one month in service and if we replaced uh, this missing value by 20,559 obviously that doesn't seem reasonable so it will be very rare that somebody drives 20,000 miles within a month and the method that we used suggests that we should have about 45 minimum and 8370 as maximum possible imputed value so if we go with the first one then this value is 45 which looks reasonable for one month and even if we go with the second one which says 8370 so that's much better than 20559 So once we have done imputations, we can get a complete data set using complete function. We can also specify which imputation we want to use, first, second or third. So let's say we want the first one. This will give us complete data set where missing values are replaced by first imputation method. So for example, first missing mileage was for the 19th car failure and the imputed value is 72,355. So if you look at 19th failure, you see the missing value is now replaced by 72,355. Similarly, if you want to look at uh, what values were replaced for state variable, so you can see that the first uh, missing data point is for 68th failure and that value has been replaced by Texas. So 68 and we have Texas instead of missing value. So once we decide uh, which imputation we want to use, so let's say if you want to use uh, the first one, you can always save this in let's say new data. And that can be used for developing prediction or classification models. So we can look at the distribution using a strip plot. So let's use uh, PCH equals 20 and size CEX equals 1.2 so blue dots are actually observed values which are available and in fact for FM everything is blue and for mileage we have first one which is based on the original data and this one here is for the first imputed values and these red colored dots indicate what was the mileage uh, that was uh, estimated based on the method that we have used in the first imputation similarly this is for the second imputation and this is for the third one and we do not see any unusual pattern here 
we can also do a scatter plot for like two variables so let's do labor cost versus labor hours so this is for the original data and this is a uh, labor cost versus labor hours based on the first uh, imputation and these were the missing values that have been now estimated and you can see that it goes very well with the data set we don't see anything unusual and this is for the second imputation and this one is for third one okay so we went over example of uh, seeing how we can use this mice package to handle missing values even if we are going to use some of the default values in most cases it works very smoothly and it is able to handle missing data whether it is a factor variable or whether it is a numeric variable so it can handle those missing values more smartly than just replacing a value with average or most frequent value or just deleting the value.